Well, hey there, and welcome back to Heimler's History. Now it is AP exam season, and I am doing my best to help you get prepared. And as you no doubt know by now, there will be a digital testing option for this year's exam. And one of the main anxieties students have about that is that they are not allowed to go back and forth on the multiple choice questions. Once you answer, it is done. So what I would like to do is to offer you some advice and strategies for taking the multiple choice section of the exam when you cannot return to the previous questions. So if you're ready to get them brain cows milked, well then let's get to it. Strategy number one, one, take your time. You are given 55 minutes to complete the multiple choice section of the exam, and in that time you have 55 questions to answer. Now, I'm just a humble history teacher, but if my math is right, that works out to about one minute per question. And that means if you know that you're not going to be able to go back to a question, make sure you spend every second of that minute making sure that you feel confident about that answer. Now, that advice is complicated a little by the fact that the multiple choice questions are stimulus-based multiple choice questions, which means that you'll be using part of that time to read the passage or interpret the image. But here's the way you manage it. In general, every stimulus has two to four questions attached to it. So for example, if you have a stimulus that has three questions, then you know that you can devote three minutes to it, including the time it takes to interpret the stimulus. So you can keep track of that time on the timer included in the digital testing app, or you can do it with some other timekeeping device. Now I know that sounds like it'll introduce even more stress, but if you start practicing now, then when the test time comes, you'll be used to it. So make sure you spend every available second on every question. Strategy number two, practice eliminating wrong answers. In my experience, when a student looks at a multiple choice question, they begin by looking for the right answer. And you know, I understand that. You're under stress, you wanna put something down on the answer sheet and you want that stress to be over. But the best advice I can give you is to begin by looking for the wrong answers and eliminating them. Now, of course, there are some questions that you get to and you just know it, sure as the sun rises every morning, and that's fine. But this advice is specifically for the questions that you're not 100% sure on. It helps here to know how these questions are written. Every multiple choice question on your exam is going to have four answers for you to choose from. And the writers of these questions have a formula that they follow. Two questions are obviously wrong. And if you know your material, you're going to know that they are wrong. Then there's the right answer, and then they include what's called a distractor, which sounds like an evil plot from the college board overlords designed to make you fail, but it's really just a way to separate those who really know their stuff from those who only kind of know it. The distractor looks kind of right, but in the context of the question, it will be wrong. And to be clear, every potential answer they give you is going to be historically accurate. Like you're never going to see an answer that is patently false. Like C, the Spanish-American War was fought between the Romans and the Mongols. You're never going to see anything like that. The wrong answers are going to be wrong, not because they are factually inaccurate, but for one of two reasons. First, it'll be wrong because the event in the answer is outside of the time period of the prompt. For example, what was a major political effect of industrialization? Answer, the creation of the United Nations. Now, you could draw a convoluted line of causation from industrialization to the UN, but in general that answer is wrong because it is not in the same time period as the main movements of industrialization. Now to be clear, there will come questions where the correct answer is outside of the time period, but they will let you know that that's what they're asking. The second general reason an answer will be obviously wrong is because the historical thinking skill does not match. For example, if you have a question on the causes of the Spanish-American War and you have an answer that includes the annexation of the Philippines, then that is obviously wrong. Why? Because the annexation of the Philippines was an effect, not a cause of the Spanish-American War. So that gives you a little taste of how the obviously wrong answers will look. Now, those aren't the only two ways that they can be wrong, but in my experience, those are the two most common. So how do you get better at eliminating those two wrong answers? Well, as you're studying, you need to make sure that you have all of your events situated in their proper time period. And second, you need to pay attention to your historical thinking skills. Like, don't just study vocabulary. Study the causes and effects of that vocabulary, or the changes and continuities that occurred over time, or how this event or person or state compares with others. So once you eliminate those answers, you are left with two possibilities, the distractor and the right answer. And if you've studied well, I hope you'll see the distractor for what it is and choose the right answer. Strategy three, understand how the scoring works. And this isn't a strategy as much as a mindset that will hopefully eliminate some stress. When you get to question 30 and something makes you realize that you got number five wrong, like don't worry. You can actually miss quite a few and still be set for a five. Now, the metric changes every year, but historically, if you get about 72 to 75 percent of the multiple choice questions right, you're still in the game to earn a five on your exam. That means you can miss like 14 or 15 questions and still be just fine. Now, again, those numbers change every year, but over the last 10 years or so, that's been the threshold. So, you know, if you miss one, 
Fine, on the digital exam, the most important questions are the ones that are ahead of you. Okay, well, I hope that helps relieve a little stress. This is a crazy year for AP exams, so if you want more help, feel free to grab my ultimate review packet right here, and don't forget to subscribe because I'll be doing a lot of these videos leading up to exam time. Heimler out.